guys and welcome back to another video. So guess who finally passed their driving test? I finally did it you guys. I passed my driving test. I passed first time and today's video I'm going to be talking about my driving experience. So if you have a test coming up or you're about to learn to drive and that sort of thing, hopefully this video and me talking about my experience will help you guys in your upcoming driving lessons and tests. So my driving lesson kind of experience is interesting. I didn't have have the best experience with driving lessons and learning to drive. Normally when you talk to someone they would have started to learn to drive and then a few months later they would have had their test and they would have passed. Sometimes they wouldn't pass first time but they'd pass within a few months of learning their test and that sort of thing. However it's not always like this. I started learning to drive in October 2016. I passed my test in April 2018. So as you can see it took me a while I wasn't driving for that whole time. I did actually end up giving up at some point, but I will explain that in a bit more detail now. Basically, I'm hoping my experience is going to help some of you guys because it isn't all perfect. You don't start learning to drive and a few months later pass your test. It, it's not like that. Driving is a big thing and I think I underestimated exactly what it was going to be like and that sort of thing. So basically, I started learning to drive as soon as I could after I turned 17. I had my 17 birthday on the 24th of September 2016 and I had my first ever driving lesson on the 7th of October. Not long before I turned 17 I actually wasn't planning on learning to drive. I didn't want to learn to drive. I didn't think I'd need to learn it and I wasn't you know I didn't really want to learn to drive. I think the reason I kind of had that mindset and idea is you know I want to live in London when I'm older and you don't really need to drive. You've got the underground and that sort of thing and also with all the car crashes that happen and that sort of thing it just it's a very scary thing because you can die in a car if you crash you can die there is a risk of death every time you go out on the road not to scare any of you drivers if you know what you're doing and you are safe you will be okay but there is that risk because you don't know what people are going to be doing on the road and I think that scared me a lot and for that reason I didn't really want to learn to drive however I then went for a sleepover at an internet friend's house just as the vlog is on my channel if you want to see that but she's a couple years older than me and so she was driving when I went to her house for a sleepover and so for two days she would be driving us around and we went to so many different places like sitting in her car and seeing her drive us all these different places I just it made me realize that actually being able to drive yourself is so awesome and it gives you so much independence because you can drive anywhere wherever you want to you don't have to rely on your parents being available to give you lifts and it was this sleepover and seeing my friend drive us around and that that actually made me realize that I did want to learn to drive and this sleepover was in August and I turned 17 that September so it was literally a month until I turned 17 that I then decided I actually wanted to learn to drive one of the things that made learning to drive exciting for me was I was the first one in my class at college to start to learn to drive I'm not the oldest in my but back when I was in first year the girl who was older than us was already old enough to drive but she wasn't planning on learning anytime soon and apart from her I'd be the first one out of all my friends and everyone in my class to turn 17 so I was the first one to start learning to drive which was really exciting I was also one of the last people to pass my test and I will get to that later on you know it was really exciting starting to learn to drive it was a whole new experience and my first few lessons the first month or two of my driving lessons went so well I picked everything up really quick I was doing really well my instructor was really impressed with me and I was absolutely loving it however a couple months into my driving lessons I reached this stage where I could drive I could drive pretty well my instructor would hardly have to tell me what to do he'd hardly ever have to use dual control and I was a pretty decent driver however I just wasn't quite up to test standard the standard that they expect in your driving tests is so precise you have to observe like the exact right amount of times you have to steer in a certain way you have to do everything in this certain precise way and if you do it slightly differently you're not going to pass your test and I just wasn't quite at that level I think my issue back then this was after driving for about three months was that I didn't uh, observe hazards in time I didn't really register them quick enough so I'd leave braking quite late and that sort of thing which is not the best thing when you're driving but I reached to this point where I could drive I just wasn't test ready 
but I wasn't getting anywhere. In my lessons, I'd have a lesson every week and I just wouldn't improve. I, I was not improving at all. No matter what my instructor taught me or told me, I was not getting any better. He was also then going on at me about doing my driving theory and I did put the theory off a lot. Obviously the driving theory is a test that you have to do in order to be able to take your practical driving test and the theory involves you going over the highway code, hazard perception and that sort of thing. And it's a test that requires a lot of revision. And I'd only just finished my GCSEs uh, a few months ago and obviously GCSEs require an insane amount of revision and I absolutely hated it and I hate exams and tests, they are not for me. I'm not very academic. I am in lessons and doing coursework, but if it, the second it requires revision and memory, I am awful. And so having been doing my GCSEs for a few months and having to revise for those, the idea of having to revise for this driving theory test, I, I didn't really want to do it. And for that reason, I kind of put it off quite a lot. And so in my lessons, my instructor was like, you're really close to being able to do your test. You should get your theory done. But on top of that, I had college work. I was doing more shows and all of that sort of stuff. And I, I hardly had any time to revise for my revision test. Plus any time I did have, I would put it off because I didn't want to have to revise. It kind of went downhill from there because I wasn't getting my theory done. I wasn't getting anywhere in my lessons. I was stuck at this point. I wasn't ready for my test, but I wasn't getting better. And my instructor wasn't the nicest. He seemed great in my earlier on lessons, but it became evident as I had more and more lessons with him that he wasn't very patient. And patience is something driving instructors really need to have. But I could tell in lessons when I wasn't getting better, no matter what he told me, I wasn't getting better. He would start to get frustrated with me. Struggling in my driving lessons to improve, like I could drive, but I wasn't getting better. It really killed my confidence. For about a month, my confidence just went downhill every single driving lesson because I'd always do something wrong and I wasn't getting anywhere and I wasn't improving. And it got to the point where my confidence was at an all time low in my driving. I was not confident in it at all. And then I had this one lesson with my driving instructor. I was very tired that week. I just wasn't feeling great. And it got to a point where I wasn't looking forward to my driving lessons because my instructor would get frustrated because I knew I wouldn't improve because I knew I wasn't getting anywhere. What was the point in having them? And you know, it got to that point I wasn't looking forward to them. And then I had this one lesson where I was feeling really down and I did not do well in that lesson at all. I remember I nearly gave my instructor whiplash. I accidentally hit the brake too hard and I nearly gave him whiplash and he got really mad at me. And I also did a load of other things not quite right. And it resulted in him getting very frustrated to the point he was nearly shouting at me at the end of the lesson. And that was the first lesson I actually felt like I was going to cry. Crying in driving lessons, I know people who have done it. I know people who have cried in driving lessons. I hate crying in front of people. I've got this mindset that it shows weakness and I absolutely hate crying. So I refused to cry in my driving lessons and I never felt like I was going to cry until this lesson where he got so frustrated with me. He shouted at me and I nearly cried. Luckily I held it in but I think that lesson really put me off because my instructor just he was so frustrated with me and I knew it was because I wasn't getting anywhere and when your instructor knows that you're not getting anywhere to the point that they're shouting at you and getting frustrated what is the point? And after that lesson, I quit driving. I quit driving. For about six months, I completely gave up driving. I, lit I lost all my confidence in that one lesson. And I was like, what is the point? I'm not going to pass my test. I'm getting nowhere. It's a waste of money because driving lessons are expensive. It is a lot of money. I do not want to work out how much money my parents have spent on my driving lessons with the number of driving lessons I had. It's well into the thousands of pounds. I can tell you that driving is expensive expensive, especially learning to drive. And you know, I, I'd been learning with this instructor for about six months. I gave up and I had this break for six months. And the thing is, I have my own car. It's my granddad's car. He passed away last year and as a result, we got it. And my mum put me in as a learner driver for it. So I was able to drive it with my provisional license. And actually before I gave up driving, I was driving my own car. I'd had to have a parent in it, but I would drive it to dance every week. I even drove it to college one day and I was actually really confident in my own car that didn't have dual control. Like this is where my driving 
thing was that I was able to drive in a car without an instructor, only with my parents, and it didn't have dual control or anything, and I would drive it around no problem. But the second I lost all my confidence and I gave up driving, I was like, I can't drive. I can't even like drive in my lessons properly. There's no way I should be driving a car without dual control. And so for those six months, I also gave up driving my own car and it sat on the driveway being unused for six months, oops. Not only did I give up driving, but at this point, a lot of my college classmates they'd started also turning 17 and they'd also started learning to drive and they quite a few of them actually passed their tests pretty quickly and so I'd given up driving I was the first to start learning to drive but all my classmates were passing their tests and they would start giving each other lifts to college and that and that also completely killed my confidence when I first started to learn to drive I was like well I'm the first one learning to drive I'll probably be the first one to pass and then I can give all my college mates like lifts to college and stuff it will be so cool but no they were giving me lifts even though they started learning months after me and that really knocked my confidence the fact that they were passing their tests even though they'd started learning after me it was my confidence that was actually the reason I wasn't getting it anywhere in my driving tests but I didn't realize that to start with until during my hiatus shall we say one good thing that came from having a break for six months was I did indeed get my driving theory test done I passed it first time now the way I got the motivation to do it is I just booked a test I'm not gonna revise for something if I don't actually know when this test is I booked a test which meant I had a deadline like and you have to pay for the driving theory so you don't want to fail because you'll have to pay for it again so having that test booked having a date that I needed to know everything gave me the motivation I needed to revise and I ended up revising for my driving test theory revision I had this pack uh, that you can buy in the shop the works in the UK and and it's by the AA and you get a copy of the highway code, a copy of all the road signs. It also comes with these DVDs which you can play on a computer. One has like tips and stuff for your practical driving test but I never actually used it. But the one for the theory test I found really helpful because it had some information on it but the main thing I used the DVD for was it had mock tests on it which you could take and it also had the hazard perception which uh, I would definitely recommend trying to find a mock hazard perception somewhere that you can do because otherwise you're not really going to know what to expect and so I used this DVD and also the highway code and road sign books which I highlighted and made notes on and I managed to pass my theory test first time so for the multiple choice question part of the theory test you have to get 43 points in order to pass and I got 44 so I just about managed to get that and I got 58 points for the hazard perception and you need 44 so I managed to pass first time and I did my driving theory test in November 2017 so quite a bit after I started learning to drive and it was during my break from driving so passing my driving theory test first time did give me a little bit of confidence back for my driving but I was still in no rush to start learning again especially as it kind of reached show season and I had lots of shows and stuff going on that I was a part of so I had lots of rehearsals and stuff and not really much time to drive now if it'd been up to me I wouldn't have started driving again for quite some time but my mum suddenly one day turned around to me and said that I had a driving lesson the following week with a brand new instructor which she'd managed to book. She didn't tell me about it until a week before. She didn't say she was finding a new instructor and I, when she first told me I was kind of annoyed and I was like I don't want to start learning again yet. I'm not ready. I don't want to learn to drive anymore like and I didn't really want to do it and I wasn't looking forward to it but I still did it anyway because my mum booked it and she really wanted me to continue learning to drive and if she hadn't done this I don't know when I would have started learning again so it's probably a good thing that she kind of forced me to start again but this new instructor I had my first lesson with in October 2017 so pretty much a year since I first started learning to drive but she was just a lot nicer she also knew my mum because she does dog training and my mum does dog training so my mum kind of heard about her through that and she was just so much nicer she didn't get frustrated with my driving and it was quite nice because she didn't know how much driving experience I had had going into the lesson so she was expecting someone who was a first timer but actually I was pretty good by then I mean I hadn't driven for six months I was at a really good place going into her lessons and I definitely started to improve after that and I got back into it and my driving improved a bit it still wasn't quite test ready and the solid reason for that 
was my confidence. I just didn't have any confidence in my driving and it's amazing how much confidence really affects your driving. However, I kept having these lessons with her. She was so much better than my first instructor. One day she turned around to me and was like, you're ready, I'm gonna book your test. And when she first said that, you know, I rolled with it, but I didn't think I was ready for my test. But obviously she knew what she was doing because I passed the test. I worked really hard revising for my driving test because I wanted to pass first time I wanted to prove to all my friends who didn't think I was very good because you know they'd all passed before me and they knew I gave up driving and I would always talk about how bad I was because I didn't think I was very good and so all my college friends thought I was a really bad driver and I wanted to prove to them that I wasn't and I wanted to do that by passing my test first time because not all of them passed their test first time and I really wanted to prove that I could drive to them and and so I worked really hard revising for my practical driving test you do need to revise for it uh, the main thing you need to revise is the show me tell me questions basically before the test starts the examiner will ask you to tell him the answer to a question there's different questions you can get it's like uh, how do you check the brake lights are working how can you check how much oil is in the car all that sort of stuff and then they ask you a show me question during the test so whilst you're driving you have to do something like turn on the lights windscreen wipers and that sort of thing I did quite a lot of revision for it I was quite shocked actually but that's how much motivation I got for the test when I finally had a date for it I was like right I need to I need to pass to prove to everyone that I can drive and so I worked really hard revising for it I made flashcards with all the different questions on that I revised every day and I would recommend the YouTube channel world driving if I remember I'll link to it in the description but this is a YouTube channel ran by this instructor called Chris and he does all sorts of videos uh, he does like uh, how to do certain maneuvers and that sort of thing and also what to expect in your test this and that and he also does mock tests with some of his students and I binged his videos for like a solid week before my test and my god did they help they helped so much I also watched uh, videos like this one uh, my driving experience vids I watched those I watched drive with me's because seeing people film drive with me's gave me motivation because if I passed my test I could film drive with me's I would definitely recommend watching mock tests because then you get to see exactly how it works my instructor never actually did a mock test with me so watching mock tests on on YouTube uh, were really helpful. I would definitely recommend using YouTube to get ready for your test. I mean, if you're watching this, you might already be doing that. So you're doing the right thing, well done. And yeah, I revised a lot for these tests. I knew all the answers to the show me, tell me questions by memory. But now we get to the actual test. So I had my test on a Wednesday and I had the 9.07 slot. Driving test times are so specific. It's really weird. Mine was exactly seven minutes past past nine I had to get up at six my instructor picked me up at half past seven see the test center where the test is is in another town to me it's a about a 20 minute drive away but in my lessons I would drive there and back every single lesson every week so it was a confident drive and she picked me up at half seven in the morning we drive to that town and then I had just under two hours to do a little driving lesson with her so I was able to make sure I was happy in her car we practiced all the maneuvers I wanted to practice having a lesson beforehand definitely helped because it been a week maybe slightly over a week since I'd last driven in her car so the lesson beforehand definitely helped me because I wasn't feeling overly confident on some maneuvers so getting to practice them before the test helped we had the lesson it went really well and then we got to the test center now the first thing you have to do when you get to the test center before your test is you have to park the car in a bay at the test center yeah I couldn't do that I can bay park no problem if it's a row of bays and I can line it up and I can go in but the test center it's only three three bays and I just you know you, d you don't get to practice parking in the test center before the test um because you're not allowed to drive there if it's just a lesson and uh I tried to bay park in it I really did and I mean I got in the box it was it was very very wonky and it took me a while I had to like drive in drive out go back a bit go out again come in and I was still very wonky so that's not very reassuring if you can't do a bay park at the test center before your test it was so bad that my instructor had to get in the car and repark it for me which you know luckily I didn't have to do a bay park in my test <laughs> but I parked the car badly I got out my instructor then parked it herself and I went inside went to the loo sat down just kind of chilled for a bit I was so terrified at this moment in time I was so nervous and then the instructor 
comes out and it's this guy and he said hello and I was like hi and I had to show him my provisional license and that sort of thing and then we went to the car and I got in the car and what I forgotten would be a thing is the fact that because my instructor had to go in to change the parking she had readjusted the seat which meant it was no longer adjusted for me so I was there frantically trying to adjust it as the examiner was getting in the car the awkward thing was the car park was on a hill and adjusting your seat when you're on a hill doesn't really work because you can't it feels different and so I tried to adjust my seat but once we started the test I realized I had adjusted it wrong because it had been on a hill and I spent like half of the test ridiculously close to the steering wheel like it was uncomfortable I was sat upright my hands were like this I was literally like this hunched over the wheel trying to drive yeah I managed to still drive uh, it was challenging obviously you can't adjust your seat whilst you're driving I didn't really want to ask my examiner if we could pull over so I could adjust the seat I was worried it would make me look bad so I just I just rolled with it and I was like okay it's fine they get you to like pull over and stop and then pull off so when we stop I can just quickly adjust it except they don't give you much time they're like can you pull over on the left please and then before you even have the handbrake on they're like okay pull off when you're ready so I didn't really get the opportunity to adjust my seat until until about halfway through the test when he then got me to do the manoeuvre which was pulling on the right side of the road which I'll get to later and we stopped for a long enough time that I was able to subtly put my seat back but no I spent a solid half of the test sat way too close to the steering wheel yeah for the first half of the test I think I was more worried about being so close to the steering wheel than I was about anything else but that aside when the instructor got into the car he you know told me like what the, would happen in the test and that sort of thing and then he said we will be using a sat nav in this test for the independent drive and I had a little party internally because yes basically the new driving test that they started at the end of last year uh, includes driving with a sat nav you have the independent drive which is about 15 to 20 minutes where you drive somewhere you either follow road signs to a certain place the examiner tells you or you use a sat nav and I wanted a sat nav because road signs are really confusing it isn't always clear and I knew that if I had to follow road signs I would definitely end up going the wrong way now if you go the wrong way and stuff you you don't fail for that the examiner just redirects you but I didn't really want to go the wrong way um, because that would be embarrassing and really awkward so I was hoping I wouldn't get road signs because I am so bad at following road signs and I was hoping I'd get a sat nav I'd only actually driven with a sat nav once before but I've been in the car as a passenger many times when like my parents have been using a sat nav so I'm kind of used to having the sat nav on in the car so I was very happy when he came in and told me we would be using a sat nav because only I think it's one in three tests use a sat nav uh, it's either one in three or one in five so you don't always use a sat nav for the independent drive and I was very happy that I would be using a sat nav so he got that set up and then the first thing he did was ask me a tell me question and this was great obviously I was confident about them anyway because I knew the answers to all the questions but in my lesson before the test my uh, instructor was like okay I'm gonna ask you a tell me question uh, just to make sure you know the answer and she asked me um, how do you check your brake lights which if you're wondering you put the ignition on you put the brake pedal down and then you look for the reflections of the light or you get someone to go and check that it's working for you and I knew the answer and I told my instructor the answer and she was like nice that's cool guess what question I got asked in the test how do you check your brake lights so that was pretty that was pretty funny I had a little internal chuckle when he asked me that because that's the exact question my instructor asked me uh, the chances of that happening there are like 12 different Tell, tell me questions or something so the chances of that being the same one my instructor had used was pretty um awesome and I knew the answer I was very confident in the answer so that was great so he asked me the tell me questions I answered it and then he was like right let's go and he we started driving around and I was very nervous very 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 nervous but actually about five minutes into the test I was fine you know it, it all it feels like is just another driving lesson it's just someone who isn't your 
instructor and I was pretty chill about it. Um, oh, one thing I will mention, I did have my instructor in the car. For your test starts, the, inst uh, the examiner will ask you if you want your instructor to sit in on the test or not. And all my friends had said uh, that they said no. They didn't want their instructor in the car and they were like, you don't want them in the car, say no. But after thinking about it, I decided that I did want my instructor in the car um, for two reasons. Uh, one, if I then failed my test, she would know exactly why I failed my test because she would have seen it happen and so she would be able to help me um, improve and work on it for the second time I do a test. And secondly, because I didn't really like the idea of being in my test driving around with this complete stranger, at least if I had my instructor in the car behind me, that was someone who I knew who I was confident driving with and it was just reassurance basically and I'm very glad I said yes because actually it doesn't change it that much. They sit behind you, they don't say anything and it was quite reassuring to sometimes see her in the rear mirror. So obviously from my experience I would go yes have your instructor in the car. It's reassuring and if you fail they they know why you failed because they saw you do it. So I would actually say yes to having an instructor in the car but obviously it's entirely up to you. A lot of people would say no it, it depends on what sort of thing you want. But we started driving and quite early on into the test he asked me to do the show me question and he asked me to wash the rear windscreen so I did it no problem whilst driving. I didn't turn it off properly at the end because it like you have to click it forwards twice the like right stop you click it forwards twice and it starts washing it and then you click it you have to click it back twice otherwise the wiper stays on and I forgot to do that so I only clicked it back once a minute later I realized it was still on and I was like oh no so I just subtly pushed the stalk back but I didn't get a minor or anything for it so that was fine and yeah so the examiner gave me like instructions and directions and I would just drive and uh, go where he told me to I'd have to pull up on the left a few times at one point he did it for like a hill start and that sort of thing did it no problem the first thing I did that I was like oh no I might have failed from that is I pulled out of a junction going right and I pulled out way too fast I just didn't have control of the car when I pulled out. I had to stop pretty quickly after I pulled out as well because there were parked cars and there were cars coming the other side so there wasn't enough room for two cars. Uh, I was able to stop in time on the right side of the road. It didn't affect any other drivers. When I did that I was like okay I might have failed from that. It was like 10 minutes into the test and I could have already failed but having done that it meant I was more relaxed for the rest of the test because I was like I'm pretty certain I failed so it doesn't really matter what I do now. Don't think that. Like still do everything correctly but it, it just it just is kind of you, you're not as stressed over it because you might have failed anyway and you're kind of expecting to fail so there isn't as much pressure straight away to try and pass. So that's the first thing that I kind of did wrong. Uh, the next thing was I did my maneuver and he asked me to pull up on the right side of the road and then reverse back. And this is a brand new maneuver they introduced for the new type of test. It's an easy maneuver, but it's so dangerous because if you time it wrong, you, you could easily crash basically. Luckily it was on a fairly quiet road that he asked me to do it. So I didn't have any problems. Um, I pulled up on the right and then I reversed and stuff. Uh, the only thing is I didn't even realize I'd done it until he told me at the end of the test but when I pulled up on the right and I stopped I stopped on double yellow lines blocking the entrance to a driveway and directly opposite a car parked on the other side of the road as the examiner said I probably couldn't have found a worse place to stop the car so obviously I got a minor for that but you see I was so focused on pulling up on the right and uh, making sure I didn't like move when there were cars coming and I was so focused on doing it I completely forgot about the fact that you're not meant to park on double yellows I wasn't even thinking about where I was stopping so yeah if you do that do think about where you stop do take into consideration double yellow lines and driveways and stuff uh, I just completely slipped my mind during the maneuver because I was so focused on the actual maneuver itself but I only got a minor for it but apart from that the maneuver went really well at one point I was driving and he was giving me direction and and he said can you turn right at the end of the junction and I must have been nervous or something I didn't really I, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing and I started signaling left and I was getting ready to turn left and then the examiner was like uh the other right and I was like oh sorry and then I changed my signal and went right. You don't get a fault from that if you go the wrong way to what the examiner says and stuff you don't get faults I don't think because he just corrected me and it was it was purely down to nerves that I wasn't paying attention to which way I was signaling I was just so set on doing everything correctly and checking my 
mirrors, I forgot that I was signaling the wrong way. But my examiner obviously had a sense of humor because he, he was just like, uh, the other left. And then I apologized and changed the signal. That was fine. <laughs> but afterwards I was like, oh my God, how could I do that in my test? But it wasn't a big deal, so it was fine. And I find it quite hilarious actually. <laughs> so then we come to another one of my faults, uh, my minors, which I got. I was turning out of a junction and I drove over the pavement. Basically, I took the corner too tight and my back wheel kind of went over the curb. I only got a minor. The second I drove over the pavement, I was like, right, that's it. I failed. And from that moment on, I was convinced I had failed that test because I drove over the pavement. I'm pretty certain that's like illegal or something. So I was convinced I had definitely failed. I was like, that's got to be a serious fault. There's no way I've passed after driving over the pavement. But no. Oh, apparently it was only a minor as the examiner put it I had an argument with the pavement um, and got a minor fault for it but I I didn't fail because of it so if you're worried about your test fear not you can drive over the pavement and still pass but I, I wouldn't recommend driving over the pavement try try not to drive over the pavement the funny thing is that was the first time I'd ever accidentally clipped the pavement whilst turning a corner since passing my test I have done that twice in my own car. Uh, I don't know where this new habit has come from. I'm obviously for some reason driving over pavements and taking corners too sharply but I mean I didn't fail my test for it so it's fine. So after all of this it was then the independent drive. He put the sat nav on, turned the volume up and I had to follow the sat nav uh, for about 15 minutes and the roads the sat nav took me on were all roads I have driven before. It was all roads I have driven before either with my old instructor or with my new instructor and they were also roads I've driven in my own car so I was familiar with all the roads the sat nav took me on I knew where I was going I didn't even need the sat nav basically and so I completely nailed the independent drive because part of it is uh, this road that has all these really horrible corners and tight turns and stuff and I remember when I did it in my own car I took the corners too fast sometimes and I wasn't very good at controlling around it and that sort of thing so having had that experience I knew in my test I was like right I need to go slowly I need to stay controlled and I did that and I absolutely nailed the independent drive because he took me on roads I have driven on multiple times before uh, the chances of that happening I guess are pretty slim but hey it was great after the independent drive he then did the emergency stop with me this was one of the things I hoped I wouldn't get in the test the emergency stop is terrifying it's the easiest easiest thing to do all you do is slam the clutch and the brake down but you know having to suddenly jerk to a to a stop and being in control of that uh yeah no thanks um if you've seen my drive with me from before I passed my test my dad did one with me and I literally had my eyes closed when I did it I wouldn't recommend doing that I didn't close them in the test it's good yeah he asked me to do the emergency stop he pulled me over on the left and then he explained to me uh when I go stop I need you to do the emergency stop I will be looking around my shoulder beforehand to make sure it is clear and safe to do it but don't stop until I give you the gesture and say stop and I was like right okay you can kind of work out when they're gonna do it because if they look around their shoulder you can look out the rear mirror and if you can see there's no one behind you it's pretty safe to assume he's about to do it and that happened and he did it and I was like whoop and I stopped and I didn't close my eyes and I did it pretty well and it actually wasn't as bad as I thought it would be it was pretty cool so he did that and then we drove back to the test center i didn't have to do a bay park thank god he just got me to drive forwards into a space um nice and easy and then he started talking to me and was like thank you very much and you know at this point i was expecting for him to fail me i i mean i drove over a pavement <laughs> like i was so convinced i had failed and i was just getting ready to hear it and then he was like well done i'm pleased to say you have passed your test and i'm there like uh, excuse me what I did it. I mean, I drove over a pavement, but I did it. I passed somehow. Yeah, I passed with 
three minor faults, which is actually better than any of my friends who did their tests. You can get up to 15 faults. If you get 15 minor faults, then you fail after that, but you can get up to 15 and I only got three, which is actually really good. And I'm so proud of myself. So obviously those three faults was the parking on double yellow lines and stuff, uh, driving over a pavement. And then the third one, I can't remember what he said. The only thing I can think it could be would be when I turned out of the junction too quickly. So that's what I'm saying it is, but it might not have been. It could have been something else, but I can't remember what he said. So we're going to go with that one anyway. And then me and my instructor celebrated a bit and then she drove me home. You're not allowed to drive uh, for like the first hour after your test because you're like all like, whoa, so you're not really in the right mindset to drive. So my instructor drove me home and then I thanked her and then I went home. My mum was the only one home when I got home. Uh, she she was in the garden uh, so I kind of snuck into the house and then I kind of snuck up the garden and then uh, she saw me and I just held up my pass certificate and uh, she started crying and then I started crying and that was quite emotional my mum <laughs> my mum wasn't expecting me to pass thanks mum glad you had so much confidence in me don't tell everyone about your test because it just adds pressure I told five people about it six people eventually knew I told obviously my mum dad and my sister knew about it i told my college teacher um about it because i had a breakdown one college lesson the week before because i was so stressed over it and my college teacher was like uh why are you crying and i had to kind of i had no choice but to tell her that i had my driving test the following week so she knew and then my dance teacher my main dance teacher who's been giving me lessons for the past 14 years i told her because you know she's like family to me i've known her for 14 years she's seen me grown up i tell her about everything so i was telling Telling her about all my driving lessons and I told her when I did my theory I told her when I took a break from driving I told her when I started driving again so you know she asked me um, uh, about how driving was going and I was like I've got a test book for next week and she was like oh good luck so she knew and then the only other person who knew was my uncle because my dad told him I told him not to tell anyone but he told my uncle uh, I think one of my favorite things was surprising my college class uh, afterwards I had to go I had this test uh, Wednesday morning I was home by like like half 10 and then I had college at one and my friends had no idea that I had my driving test because I'd continued to say uh, bad things about my driving even though I now knew I was good enough to do my test I continued the act of pretending to not be very good so that they wouldn't suspect anything and it was quite funny because uh, we ended up talking about driving a few days before uh, it just kind of came up because when you're all learning to drive and you're all passing your tests it, it kind of comes up and uh, every time we spoken about driving I'd managed to slip in questions about the test because obviously a lot of my friends had done theirs um, and I was asking them about it and because we'd just been asking uh, talking about driving they didn't suspect anything and then I come into college and I'm like uh guess you passed their driving test and they were like uh what they were so shocked it was it was it was so funny and it was great I loved surprising them and yeah basically I can drive now and that is my experience I have now driven by myself uh more drive than me's are, are, are to come. I'm loving driving, not gonna lie. After having that break from it and not enjoying it at all and really so close to giving up completely, now that I've actually passed my test and I have my own car and I'm driving in my own car, I'm so glad I did it again. And uh, I mean, it was hard being one of the last people to pass my tests, even though I was the first one to start learning. And it was really hard seeing everyone pass before me. And it's not been the best experience experience learning to drive it's been so stressful um i'm very glad i got a new instructor i'm pretty certain if i'd started with my uh most recent instructor when i first started to learn i would have passed my test uh, much quicker um it's amazing how uh much difference uh, the instructor can make so if you're taking lessons and you're not certain on your instructor get a new one honestly save yourself the trouble get a new instructor but you know i i'm very proud of myself it's been a tough experience learning to drive when I first started learning over a year ago I didn't think there would be this much drama with it but it's been 
interesting, shall we say. But, you know, I eventually did it. And at the end of the day, the way I'm looking at it is, yes, my friends all passed their tests quicker than me, but I have more driving experience than them because they started learning after me and then they passed their tests. So they haven't been driving um, as long, whereas I still have about a year's worth of driving experience. So I, I actually have more driving experience than them. It just took me longer to do my test. And it's not like I uh, took so long because I kept failing my test. I passed first time. But yeah, I'm proud of myself for doing it and I am loving driving. Uh, it's so good. It gives you so much independence and it's great. Um, I'm not looking forward to having to um, pay for petrol or anything. But, um, well, you know, I one step closer to adult life. I've got a car now and I'm driving. And yeah, that was, uh, that was my my driving experience. So I started driving uh, in October 2016. I gave up around March 2017. I started taking lessons again with a new instructor in October 2017. Passed my theory first time in November 2017 and then I passed my test first time in April 2018. So it's been a long ride but we got there. So that's been my driving experience and my driving test experience. If you have any questions about anything, whether it's lesson theory or the practical test, just comment down below or send me a message on social media links in the description. Don't give up like I did. If if it's if you're not getting anywhere, change instructors because that could be why you're not getting anywhere and just keep at it. Um, You will do it. And don't let people passing before you knock your confidence. I still let it knock my confidence today but I wish it didn't um, so don't let it just think you've got more driving experience so you're probably a better driver anyway and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video this ended up being a lot longer than I thought it would be but I guess I had a really long driving uh, lesson and test experience um, hope this has helped uh, please comment down below if it has helped but yeah like comment and subscribe hope you guys enjoyed I will see you all in my next video goodbye